Not shaking, babes. We just got a mid-event pickup summon, this time featuring the old ones. But how much of a cosmic threat to your wallet are they? No Abduction time! In a rather bold move, this wise king attempts to limit his rival's movement options while magnifying his own. In short, Nodens has some potential for dueling. He can close the gap between him and his enemy, hit the enemy for admiral damage, disable their movement, and make a safe escape out of the range. Execution-wise, he hits the nail on the head, but it seems he hasn't quite caught on that dueling is largely irrelevant in this game. Where applying massive inescapable damage at a broad range is the standard for peak gameplay. While his damage amp and damage mitt bear some potency, as a loose cannon, his tendency to move out of formation is a liability to team coordination. He can shoot for the moon, but he won't be landing among the stars. Near a last of death. True to his reputation, this messenger of chaos incites a madness that wastes away the masses, and leaves his challengers cowering in place with a weakened ability to fight against his prophetic word. As he dances to and delights in this infectious insanity, he becomes quite more resistant and more punitive to his apostates. If the chaos ensues past turn 3 and onward, he may even bring the most robust institutions to its knees inflicting a unique effect that massively reduces enemy skill activation rate conditional on their terror. As long as the enemy doesn't resist fear, your last tip has the potential to break challenges by disrupting how they're intended to work. He is by no means well suited to directly achieving victory, but will come in handy if you just want to see the world burn. As a thought. For an idiot, he has plenty ingenious tactics. The progenitor of the Old Ones, Pantheon, proves his seniority through multiple ways. Offensively, his damage scales to galactic heights as he is continuously hit and debuffed. Defensively, he substitutes all enemy ranges with one of minimal verticality and maximal penalty, rejects all debuffs, mitigates most damage for himself and allies at a multi rollable rate, self heals, and denies death itself. On top of all this, he can guaranteeably deny the enemy the ability to activate their skills. Scary damage, robust defense, and oppressive utility. What more can you ask for? This lack of early damage is great for farming, but for any other quest, Azathos is shockingly stacked for a 4 star. Don't sleep on him. He needs only wake up to switch your doubts. Despite his divine slothfulness, Sasago managed to level up his game, if only a bit. In addition to his previous slow charge fill and charge dependent damage mitigation, he now removes debuffs, has improved team healing, disables follow-up attacks at an improved rate, and amplifies damage to those with disabled attacks. None of these resolve the issues Sasago had with his early defensive reliability, but if he does survive getting hit, at least now he has a better chance to survive beyond turn 2. The conditional damage amp may be nice one day, but as of now, preemptively inflicting charm is still fairly rare, so it's unlikely to be helpful for quick layers. Let's so for one more Evo that can round out his kit, like all that blazing rounded out his belly. Asura. Upon entering Grand Zero, the King in Yellow seals off the area and progressively disperses a myriad of biohazardous debuffs from his local area to the edges of his zone. Once his zone is completely sealed by turn 3, he'll have complete reach over his subjects within, applying extra damage to those closest to him afflicted the most, while stripping them of their armaments. Those challenging Hester's enforcement are prone to losing their strength and capacity to use skills. Under his control, nearby allies affected by his overbearing toxins actually bolster in their own strength. Due to the timing and ranges of his eminent control, he's not exceptionally useful for farming. Not particularly goal-oriented, but making the zone as inhospitable as possible to the enemy may have some uses for blind challenge clears. Dagon. This father crater has the simple function of pulling nearby enemies in range of his debilitating attack, mitigating their damage and defense while denying their movement. It brings in additional personal damage and defense, while offering some flat damage and healing options. He doesn't have the reliability or range to be ideal for farming, but 
For challenges, does a decent job at providing staples in advantage state across damage, defense, healing, and positioning. A lack of flair, or refreshingly straightforward. Dagon might satisfy his newer students, but his performance won't be enough to get tenured. Should we welcome our new alien overlords? If you've been driven to madness, he might actually enjoy some of these kits, as they all force the enemy to play by their absurd rules. Other than the blind idiot got himself though, the others have ironically lost sight of the end goal of having practical strengths. For those that have yet to sink into the abyss, steer clear of this banner. That's all for now cuties, catch you next time!